guys, I'm Danielle or Danny for short. I'm originally from Guam, born and raised my whole life, but my family and I had moved out to Norfolk, Virginia in early 2021. And while it's been fun exploring a whole new lifestyle out here, of course there are always going to be things that I miss from my home. Now last year I posted a video called 8 Things I Miss About Guam, and it did very well and I got a lot of interaction from you guys, so I'm guessing you enjoyed it. But since posting that video, I also realized that I couldn't exactly stop the list at 8 things I missed. There were so many more things I realized I missed about Guam. So today's video can be considered somewhat of a part 2 or a continuation of that first video. And if you haven't been able to watch that one, I'll leave a link above or below in the description so you can check it out there. And of course, you can also consider subscribing to my channel if you want to check out all my other videos about things to do on Guam some of my favorite places, uh, especially if you are new to the island and have been thinking about exploring around there. I also have a super awesome announcement, so be sure to watch till the end of the video. I am just, I'm so excited to share my good news. Don't forget if you find this video informative or entertaining in any way, then please give it a thumbs up. And let's get into it with more things I miss about Guam. Off today's video with one of the first things that I miss about Guam and that has to be Crown Bakery. Now when we lived on Guam we stayed in the more central area of Ganya Heights and Sinahanya and one of our favorite donut shops, pastry shops, bake shops that we really really loved was Crown Bakery which is located in Barragata. And don't get me wrong there are a lot of awesome bakeries all around the island but this one was the closest to us at about maybe like eight minutes away from our house so we really couldn't beat that. You could find a lot of awesome baked goods at Crown Bakery from you know fresh bread to pies, uh, cakes, but the one thing that we always went there for were their donuts. Living where we live in Norfolk, Virginia, a lot of the donut shops out here are a little bit more on the like franchise style and they do more cakey donuts like those crazy, you know, concoctions of like maple icing with sprinkled bacon and oh, this one is like a s'mores donut. And yes, those are great, but my husband and I, we both love just the simple glazed donut, that soft kind of yeast donut. And Crown Bakery's donuts were just perfect every time. Luckily, I did find a donut shop here in Norfolk that has glazed donuts, just the simple glazed donuts that come pretty close to Crown Bakery. But yeah, it was just something that we kind of treated ourselves to maybe like once or twice a month. We would just go and get half a dozen of simple glazed donuts from Crown and it just, it made the weekend so awesome. Now the next thing on the list of things I miss about Guam, I can't exactly state the obvious and say warm weather, but more so what I miss is the predictable weather. For those of you who don't know, Guam basically has summertime year-round and you know during the actual summer months then it gets you know a little hotter but traditionally it's, ba it's basically you know 75 to 85 you know somewhere in that realm daily. Living out here in Virginia and experiencing already now a full year of all four seasons it really did make me miss how Guam just, I already knew what kind of day it was going to be. I didn't have to pack multiple different clothes um, or equipment, you know, that I might need. And it was just, it was just kind of nice to already know what it was going to be like. I especially missed the warm weather in Guam when it was winter out here because when I was in Guam during December, January, February, I was that jerk who would post online winters are so harsh on guam and i would just post a picture of being on the beach <laughs> with a nice cold drink in hand and my feet in the sand you know just that very cliche setup but yeah it was just it was a very comfortable warm and maybe that's just me personally you know that i prefer that kind of weather yeah i, I love just being able to wear like tank tops and shorts and flip-flops and not really have to worry about any other kind of clothes I might need. Next on the list of things I miss about Guam, it would have to be the Poke Bowls from Onajiri 7. Now I want to talk about this one with a bit of a disclaimer because in my first video, anytime I had mentioned some kind of food or dish that I missed 
uh, from Guam, people were like, that's not Chamorro food. Like, why, why would you miss that? That's not Chamorro food. But I realized I didn't clarify. I already know how to cook my favorite Chamorro dishes. So I haven't had a reason to miss those. What I do miss are dishes that I either haven't learned how to make myself or I just don't have the ingredients for it. Because otherwise I'm always cooking. So while I do know how to make my own tuna pokey, I don't know how to make or replicate Onajiri 7's tempura egg tuna poke bowl. And that was, oh gosh, that was the thing I always ordered there. I'm sure I could try to learn how to make, you know, a tempura egg. <laughs> you know, I'm, I know there's probably like a lot of videos and articles as to how I can uh, do it myself. But yeah, sometimes I would do the, uh, that bowl and add avocado in it. And it just came with like these, you know, uh, marinated onions and tempura like little tempura shavings for crunch it was oh gosh i'm like making myself salivate thinking about it <laughs> and it was really cheap for the portion i want to say the bowl was maybe like this size it was a big serving and it was only like five to six bucks so you really can't beat that next on the list of things i miss about guam is having no tax <laughs> and i know this might be a funny one to bring up but it's just more so because living my whole life on Guam and being used to not seeing it. Uh, moving out here, it is always something that I have to adjust to. I guess it kind of balances out because import costs, you know, going to an island like Guam, it will raise the price in general. So maybe if you go grocery shopping or you, you know, uh, buy fast food or whatever, yeah, it might be a few cents or even a few dollars more. Um, so I guess it kind of evens out, but I think where I notice it the most is when you dine out. Like on Guam, okay, you're gonna go dine out at a restaurant, exactly what the food costs is exactly what you're going to pay. Whereas out here, it's probably around the same price. Like let's just say for example, it's you know a $10 plate of chicken wings. Um, it's a $10 plate of chicken wings on Guam, you're paying $10. It's a $10 plate of chicken wings out here in Virginia and there's tax added on to it so and it's like the same amount of food but you are paying tax on it so it's just one of those extra costs kind of things. I think even when shop, uh, shopping online like if you get something shipped to Guam there's no tax added. When you get something shipped out here tax is added so it's kind of like you always have to over budget for things to you know to know exactly what you're gonna end up paying. We're getting so close to the end of the video. I'm getting like so excited to share my good news with you guys. We're almost there. On to the next thing that I miss about Guam and it is Mighty Purple. So Mighty Purple, or at least the one I'm familiar with, is located in Aganya. It's kind of close to the uh, main cathedral as well as the police station, but they specialize in acai bowls and smoothies. And I know you can make your own acai bowl at home or you can go get it. There are a lot of like acai you know, places, but it was just the setup of Mighty Purple. It just, I don't know, it feels so fresh inside. They have like plants hanging from the ceilings. Um, and I think on top of that, they also have the option to serve your acai bowl in an actual coconut shell. So you just really embrace that whole island vibe with it. Not only do they do acai bowls and smoothies, but they also have some, um, you know, savory items on their menu. And one of my favorites was their sandwiches made with taro bread. Maybe I'm being biased because purple is one of my favorite colors, but it is really cool to have a purple sandwich. My favorite taro bread sandwich that they served there was definitely their turkey with Genancy Ranch. If you're not familiar with what Denancy is, it's kind of like a spread or a paste and it's made like a basic form of Denancy would be um, ground red doni peppers and it's kind of like the local peppers along with uh, garlic and onion and some people will add, you know, other seasonings or coconut milk, but it basically gets cooked down and ground into this paste. So Mighty Purple does a Denancy ranch, so like a spicy ranch, and that spread just goes on with your turkey, lettuce, tomato, and the purple taro bread. And I guess also taro bread has a kind of like a starchier texture to it. So obviously it's very filling, but yeah, it's just kind of one of those unique items that really makes you miss Guam. Now, next on the list of things I miss about Guam is this one is a little bit more personal to me because it was something I it was on it was a weekly basis for me but it definitely has to be teaching my dance classes 
Now, growing up all throughout middle school and high school, I actually was in two different um, dance schools, one being Dance Jazz Dance Company and the other being Body Arts. Uh, body Arts was more so like the foundation was ballet classes that they offered there. And for my last, say, three or four years uh, before I left Guam, I was actually teaching at Body Arts. I was teaching uh, jazz and hip hop and contemporary. and. I haven't really explored enough out here in Virginia to find a dance studio yet, plus I've just been really busy working and of course now dealing with my pregnancy, uh, but it really has made me miss my students in general, um, coming up with choreography for them, and uh, yeah, hopefully hopefully when I get a chance to go back, um, I, I can you know pay a visit, maybe teach a class, maybe take a class, I don't mind being a student either, but it was always a fun experience for me to be able to, you know, uh, just engage with the students and come up with new ideas, seeing, you know, whatever is working in your mind come to life on stage. And it was, yeah, it's definitely a part of who I am having my dance background, but I can definitely say that Guam has a huge amount of talent in the dance community and I'm just proud to be a part of it as well. Talking again about food that I miss on Guam, one dish that I really do miss is the tap salong from Cracked Egg. Cracked Egg is this really awesome breakfast spot. It kind of started off as like a you know graveyard shift uh, operational place, and the only reason I know that is because that was like our go-to after a night out uh, on the Tumon Strip, going to the bars, and when we needed a place to go sober up, we would go to Cracked Egg and eat there. But it has now become more mainly of like a breakfast and brunch spot. And one of our favorite dishes on that menu is called tap salong. So it's basically uh, three types of meat, right? There's the pork longanisa sausage, so it's kind of like a sweet uh, Filipino sausage. There's beef tapa, and then there's chicken tocino. So it's kind of like a mixture of like Filipino cuisine and Chamorro cuisine, but it comes with garlic fried rice and a side of finadeni to pour over all of that. And I think you get like two eggs, any style. Yeah, it is just so delicious. So on days where I don't feel like trying to make it, uh, feeling lazy and I just want it like that, we would go to Cracked Egg for breakfast or brunch. And yeah, that dish is just so good. Uh, but obviously if, you know, there are a lot of great dishes on their menu. So if I wasn't getting the tap salong, then I was getting their Italian frittata. It's basically just this open face omelet with veggies, cheese, penne noodles, and it's like drizzled in this white, cheese sauce, I think mean, it's called like bechamel sauce, but bechamel sauce, not too sure, don't don't quote me on that. Um, they also have like fun pancakes, like red velvet pancakes, pistachio pancakes, chocolate pancakes. Either way, the setup is really awesome, the service is very speedy as well, so you really could just get in, get out, get a great meal, and yeah, it's always a good time at Cracked Egg. Last on the list of things that I miss about Guam, it's gotta be the beautiful sunrises and sunsets. Now, in my last video of eight things I miss about Guam, I mentioned you know how I miss Guam's beaches, obviously. But one element of going to the beaches was being able to catch like the gorgeous sunrises and sunsets. The neat thing is, though, on Guam, there's just something about the chemistry in the sky. But you really didn't even have to go to a beach to catch these. I mean, if you were even just going on a hike, heck, even sometimes I would just walk out my front door and there was a gorgeous sunset. Uh, you know, just orange, pink, purple colors, it, just, it was always so beautiful. And there's just something very warm and calming about, you know, just kind of seeing the sky like that. Don't get me wrong, I have been able to catch a few, you know, really nice sunsets out here in Virginia, but it still just doesn't compare to the ones on Guam. I don't know what it is, it's just the vibrance of the colors, you know, or something, I don't know, it's just, there's nothing else like it. Now it's time to share my big announcement and what better way to do it at the end of talking about all the things I miss about Guam to announce that I am going to be back on Guam next year. Ah, I am just so ecstatic, but basically my sister is getting married early 2023, so I will obviously be attending. I don't care that it's going to be about 20 hours plus of uh, traveling from here to Guam. 
it is gonna be so worth it. And I do plan to stay for a good amount of time. Uh, one, yes, because I, I want to see friends and family and indulge in all these things that I've been missing about my home. But two, I also wanna refresh a lot of my Guam material and you know, just kinda of get some updates, what's, you know, what's newly developed there, what things that I, I haven't explored yet. And so if you guys want to see anything specific, if you're interested, there's anything that I haven't really covered in my Guam videos, definitely leave a comment below so I can try and check it out for you. I am definitely looking forward to this upcoming trip back to Guam to visit. And of course, to share more about the beauty of Guam in general with all of you guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. If you did, then please give it a like. And if you're enjoying the content so far, feel free to subscribe to the channel and you can check out all the new stuff I post. Until then, I'm just gonna be counting down the days until my Guam vacation. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.